Okay, guys. Well, thanks for jamming for us. That was amazing. Uh, and those were all songs off of the newest EP, right? That's correct. Yes, First Place Silver. First Place Silver! <laughs> and when did you guys release that? Uh, probably like a month and a half ago, October 4th, we released it. Yeah. And that's the follow-up to your first EP, Shoebox, Shoebox Sessions? <laughs> yes, that's right. The Shoebox Sessions were um, our kind of, it's a bit of a glorified demo in a way. We recorded it ourselves at this little studio in Parkdale called Shoebox. Uh, and uh, we actually got evicted from that place for playing too loud. So that That's fun. amazing. How rock and roll is that? <laughs> Yep. Yeah, it's <laughs> very it's very Toronto too. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of yeah. speaking of Toronto, you guys all come from very different backgrounds, different bands. I know you guys are pretty well known in the music scene before the Crooked began. Uh, how did this all begin and when? Well, it all started um, when I was touring with other bands. I got the, the urge to start doing original music again, and uh, actually. Dell, our drummer, was one of the first people who was like, you should, you should do this, you should, he was really encouraging it, and he uh, booked my first two solo shows, and then I was like, hey, Dell, you should, we should jam together, and yeah, we live in the same building, so, and then I uh, heard about Russ, who's kind of like a local legend, you know, the stud over here. I'm infamous. I <laughs> love it. And then, uh, funny enough, we put out an an ad on Craigslist uh, for a guitar player and uh, Nalesh answered it and uh, he was still living in Berlin at the time yeah and uh, so you traveled all the way here from Berlin uh, I, think, yeah, I traveled here from London I had this sort of two week grace period in between London, uh, Berlin and Toronto uh, yeah went back home and then yeah I arrived on the Monday met up with JC that very evening and uh, by the next day we were jamming and I think literally under two weeks later was our debut show at Lee's Palace. I'm trying to project, okay? <laughs> and that's how it began. That's pretty great though. Like, it seems like it, it all came together pretty quickly and you guys seem really comfortable with each other. Like, how has the journey been so far? It's, uh, we're a little too comfortable with each other. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's been great. It's like, these guys are quickly have become my best friends and, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure they feel the same way. It's nice playing uh, in a band of brothers. People will see that when they come to our shows. They're like, you can tell you guys are not just a band you play uh, on stage with each other, but like clearly uh, there's, a, there's a unique connection there. Well, it definitely shows through you guys play tight. It's totally awesome. Um, what's next for you guys? Um, we're gonna do some more demos. Uh, we're pretty much done shows for the year. Um, so in December, January, we're gonna work on some demos, and then we got Bovine on February second, and hopefully Europe next year. I think that's what we're uh, hoping for. Europe sounds amazing. That would be great. I'm sure you guys will do it. Yeah, we love, we love Canada, but um, it's too big. Yeah, we we're such an international band. Like Nalash is from the UK, and he's got roots in Germany. I've been to Europe a bunch of times to tour as well. Um, Russ is Swiss, he speaks French, I speak Spanish, love to go to Spain as well. You know, so we're gonna, we're gonna make it happen in 2019. So is that where some of the influences come in then? Because you guys are like pretty diverse, your music, um, and there's a lot of different sounds in there. It's, it, it sounds like you're combining so many different things. Do you think the multiculturalism is, is a big part of that or? Yeah, I can't imagine, imagine it not being, for sure. Um, even if it's subconsciously, it always uh, comes out, I think, just mm -hmm. having fun with each other and just having a relaxed environment gives a good uh, area to create. Yeah. Kind of like, um, like we're a very Toronto band in that sense, like Toronto's strength is its diversity and that's the same with the Crooked. You know, we all listen to very different types of rock music and we may not like it all the time, but I think that's what makes us a very unique and um, engaging band. So that being said, what are some of your influences? Like, what are the bands that you take from and put into your music a little? Nalesh? Um, so I grew up on a lot of grunge, Alice in Chains, Nirvana, moved towards blues and uh, blues rock, a lot of Guns N' Roses. Recently, it's been a lot of country. My playlist, a lot of Vince Gill, a lot of Brad Paisley. Lots of techno while I was living in Berlin. Um, 
yeah kind of pretty much yeah so uh that's the next album yeah so just a, a very colorful synthesis out of all of that um well i came actually from predominantly like a metal and punk background so like i kind of like refused uh, lamb of god um i got like some more classic rock like aerosmith i especially liked how they they put their music together how all the different pieces fit together i feel like we do a little bit of that in this band too um but definitely like a lot of metal for sure when i especially like early 20s now i've kind of mellowed out a bit just kind of listen to a lot of like local toronto rock lately and not really i'm kind of not thinking outside that box right now i'm pretty like one track so yeah <laughs> like um like like Nilesh said, actually, I'm really into the grunge stuff from the 90s, but I also like a lot of weird stuff, like um, like the Mars Volta, kind of progressive rock, and also uh, one of my favorite, one of my biggest influences is St. Vincent. She's one of the, I think one of the most brilliant songwriters, and I just appreciate really good songs, well-written songs. Yeah, um, yeah I grew up with uh, three older brothers, so I was exposed to a lot of music early, so I was a big fan of NXS, uh, U2 at the start, and then by grade four, I think I was listening to Tool and Corn. I was the outcast at school for listening to the heavier stuff, but eventually Deftones, Perfect Circle, were like where my drumming influences come from, those bands. That's awesome. You can definitely hear a lot of those influences in, in your songs and lyrics. Um, and with lyrics, who writes most of it, or is it a combined effort? Um, for the most part, it's me, but uh, for example, Dog Days, uh, most of the lyrics were written by Russ, and um, yeah, so sometimes it's a collaborative effort, and I always encourage the guys to uh, write more than just songs about poop, you know. <laughs> I, think, I think for the new, the new stuff, we're, we're all going to try to put a, our best foot forward in that. I know I'm, I'm planning on contributing a lot more lyrically than I was before. Yeah, so and vocal. Sure. And yeah, JC's been coaching the hell out of me. It's unreal. Like my vocals went from like, ah, this guy can kind of sing sometimes if he's not too drunk to like, okay, now I know what I'm doing and I don't get drunk before I play anymore. <laughs> no, I, I'm going through the same thing on a different level. Like I, I didn't know how to sing. I used to be like the worst singer ever. I wouldn't even consider myself a singer. You know, this is all kind of new to me as well, so. Well, you can definitely belt them out now, so that's great. <laughs> I don't suck. I don't suck either. <laughs> I'm excited for the future. I mean, like Europe and everything, that sounds great. Um, do it. Yeah. yeah, and then... Or to Japan. <laughs> hear that, guys? Japan. Okay. Maybe maybe 2020. I have the Pikachu onesie already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, for a lot of bands, especially in Toronto, there's... Um, uh, Europe's always the pipe dream, right? But it stays a dream. Um, I think this band is configured in such a way due to our backgrounds that it's really possible for us. You know, so we can start talking about it in real terms, in immediate terms. You know? So that's certainly a goal that we're going to try and achieve next year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, where are some pins? <laughs> yeah. Get those like posh little pins from the CN Tower. <laughs> well, it seems like you guys have been making things happen, and on a short like time frame, you've gotten two EPs out. You're working on, an or you're starting working on another one now. So, sure. I mean, seems songs, seems like maybe it's not just a dream, you know? It's exciting. How many songs do you think you guys will put on the next EP, or is that totally up in the air? It's up in the air right now. We're just uh, just trying to write a bunch of new ones and uh, going to the vaults and bring out some some old gems that I've had as well. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Great. Well, thank you so much for coming down to Link Studios today and jamming for me. I feel like it was my own little private show well, that we're sharing with all of you. Um, yeah, so thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It was, uh, it was a really fun day. You guys are great to hang out with. Likewise, Thanks for having us. Uh, Great. So that's uh, I'm Sarah Ratchey for C Rock Live magazine on crocklive.com, and that's the crooked. All right. <laughs>